What's up everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. If you're brand spanking new to this channel, I'm really glad to have you. If you've been here before, I'm glad to see you again. In this video and the next few that I'm gonna be working on, we're gonna be taking this Dell PowerEdge R620 server and turning it into a virtualization beast for network engineers. Let me tell you why I got this server. The reason I got this server is because I'm a network engineer. I'm constantly testing and labbing things out for work, studying for certifications, or I just straight up forgot how something works. So I go and lab it out. Now I use a combination of different things like CSR 1000 Vs, Cisco modeling labs, even G and just all kinds of other things. And I was running all of those on VMware Workstation Player, which is a type two hypervisor that's installed on my Windows 10 PC. Now that Windows 10 PC is also used for things like video editing, Photoshop, gaming and more. And it was just starting to be too much and I was running out of resources. So I wanted to get something dedicated for just networking and labbing purposes that I don't have to worry about running out of resources for hopefully a long time. This is gonna be a three part mini series. Now, specifically in this video, which is gonna be part one, I'm gonna be taking this server, which is fresh out of the box and getting it prepped and ready for an ESXi installation. ESXi is gonna be my hypervisor of choice. Now that preparation means getting the server configured with an IP address for management and getting storage configured in a RAID setup. Part two is actually gonna be downloading and installing ESXi on the server. And part three is gonna be installing EVNG as a virtual machine and getting it fully running with router and switch images. In the future, I'll show you how to install other things for network engineers in ESXi like CML or Cisco modeling labs, Linux VMs for Ansible and other types of network automation and more, so don't worry. So this is a used Dell PowerEdge R620. Let me give you a really quick tour. So it has 128 gigs of RAM, two eight core E5 2660 processors. So that's 16 cores total. And they're clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. This is an eight bay server. So it's capable of eight hard drives. And I currently have four 600 gig hard drives installed. But actually when I got this, it came with two 300 gig hard drives. So I'm like, okay, let me get two or three more. So on Amazon, 300 gig hard drives for the server were like 40 bucks. So I did a little bit more research and I found a company online called Water Panther who sells them for half the price. But the problem is, is that they're always sold out. But they did have, however, 600 gig hard drives for the same price as the 300 gig ones on Amazon. So for 600 gig hard drives, it is. So I'm really happy with the specs in this server. It's going to be a network virtualization beast and I can't wait to get it set up. Now, when you get a server, you plug in the power supplies. This one has two, and I'll show you that in a second. And you're gonna connect a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor with the VGA cable. Or you could take advantage of the server's iDRAC 7 port on the back. iDRAC stands for the Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller. Let me show you. So like I said, this server has two power supplies, and what's really awesome is that these are hot swappable. So if for some reason a power supply dies, I can get another one online and just easily swap it out. They come out really easily. And over here I have four one gig NICs. These are what I'm gonna use to connect the server to my production network. And over here I have two USB ports. So this is where you would connect your USB mouse and your USB keyboard. Here's your VGA port where you're gonna connect that external monitor. And this is the iDRAC port I was telling you about. This is a dedicated separate network port just for management of the server. So what I can do is I can take a copper ethernet cable, plug it into the iDRAC port, hear that beautiful click sound, let the server get an IP address via DHCP, or I can assign one statically myself. Once it has an IP address and it's online on the network, I can put that IP address into my web browser and access the iDRAC GUI. You want to know why this is awesome? Because I don't need to connect a monitor, keyboard, and mouse to the server. I can configure and manage everything on the server from my web browser. So I've connected the ethernet cable to my iDRAC port that I just showed you. We are ready to get started. Let's boot this thing up. All right, so before we get the server powered on, I just want to show you a few things. So here in the front, we have two USB ports. If you wanted to plug in your USB mouse or your USB keyboard or maybe a thumb drive with an operating system on it, you could. Right next to it is gonna be an SD card slot. And then right above this here where it says PowerEdge R620 is a little rectangular LCD screen. It's hard to see it right now because the server's powered off, but as soon as I turn it on, it's gonna light up and you're gonna be able to see it. And it's from that LCD screen that you're gonna configure the IP address for your iDRAC port. You're going to configure it using these three buttons here. You have a left arrow, a check mark, and a right arrow. So let's go ahead and get the server powered on so we can get the IP address configured. To power on the server, you're gonna press the power button to the right of the Dell logo right here. And when it boots up, it's gonna be pretty loud. It's the fan spinning extremely fast. After a few minutes, it'll settle down. 
So you can see the LCD screen lit up and it's saying system booting. All right, so now the server is definitely a lot quieter. The fans aren't spinning as loudly. And if we look at the LCD screen, what you see there, that's actually the server name. You can change that if you want. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and press the check mark. And I'm presented here with two options. I have setup and view. Now, since the server is fresh out of the box, what I want to do is I want to highlight setup and press the check mark. So I'll press the right arrow key and then the check mark. It's asking me, do I want to configure the iDRAC? I sure do. And it's asking me here, for the iDRAC, do you want the IP address to be assigned automatically via DHCP server or do you want to assign it statically? Now for this video, I'm going to assign it via DHCP. But in production, typically you'd want to assign a static IP address for your management ports on your servers. And once the server is fully set up and running and everything's good to go, I'll go ahead and change the IP address to be static. So since DHCP is already highlighted, I'm just going to go ahead and press the check mark in the middle. And that's it. It's asking me, hey, do you want to save your work? Yes, I do. I want to save this configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and press the check mark. Now we're back at the server name that we saw here in the beginning. So after about a minute, the server should get an IP address and we're gonna go ahead and verify that. All right, so to verify the IP address that the iDRAC port received from the DHCP server, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press the check mark again. And remember these two options that we saw earlier, we had set up and view. Now we wanna go ahead and highlight view. Do you wanna check your iDRAC settings? Yep. Do you want to check the iDRAC's IPv4 or IPv6 settings? Here I want to check its IPv4 settings. Now here you can view the IP address, you can view the subnet mask, the gateway information, any DNS server info, but for now all I care about is the actual IP address. So I'm going to press the check mark. Perfect, I can see that the IP address assigned to the iDRAC port is 192.168.1.93. Now I should be able to ping that IP address and access it from a web browser. Let's do it. All right, so now that we powered on the server and we configured the iDRAC port to get an IP address via DHCP, let's go ahead and make sure that we can ping the IP address that it was assigned. So I'm gonna open up my command prompt and the IP address we got was 192.168.1.93. So I'm just gonna do ping 192.168.1.93. Great, I get a response. We're now ready to head to our favorite web browser to access the iDRAC GUI. Let's do it. Now that the server is on the network and we can ping it, we wanna go ahead and access the iDRAC GUI from our web browser. So what you wanna do is in the address bar, go ahead and put the IP address that the server got during its DHCP process. So it was 192.168.1.93. Here we're at the login screen for the iDRAC GUI. Now here's the login screen for the server's iDRAC GUI. Um, it's asking for a username and password. By default, if you don't configure anything, the username is going to be root and the password is gonna be Calvin, but be sure to change it once you get logged in. All right, so now that we've logged in successfully, you can see a lot of information about the server. So it gives you an overall health summary, you know, your batteries, your fans, power supplies, things like that. Down here under server information, you can see the IP address that it got, some of the firmware version information. Over here on the right, you have quick launch tasks. So from this GUI, you can power on and off the server or reboot it. What's really cool is that even if the server is powered off, as long as the power supplies are plugged into a power source and you can ping the IP address, you'll be able to access the iDRAC GUI when the server is off, which is pretty awesome. And then over on the left, you can view all kinds of things. So if you wanna see your iDRAC settings, um, if you wanna go down to hardware, let's say you wanna check your CPU, you can check your CPUs here. So um, a lot of really good information. Let's go back to the overview. And this is by far the coolest thing. So here's this virtual console. So what I can do is I can launch a virtual console and another little browser is gonna pop up and it's gonna show me the console just if I was actually connected to it with a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. So I wanna go ahead and click launch and this little thing's gonna pop up, file can harm your computer. Yes, I wanna keep it. Go ahead and open it up. And it's gonna say, do you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. Yes, go ahead and run. This little thing popped up here. Let's go ahead and run. And here we have our virtual console. Again, this is awesome. I don't have to have a separate monitor, a separate keyboard, a separate mouse. As long as I can reach the server's iDRAC IP address, I can get into the iDRAC GUI and launch the virtual console. So now that we're done with the IP address portion for management, we need to get the storage set up. 
So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I have four 600 gig hard drives installed, but the problem is that they need to be formatted. I need to get these four hard drives formatted into one giant virtual disk. Once that's done, I can then install my hypervisor. And the one that I want to install is going to be VMware ESXi, but it can be whatever you want, Windows Server 2019, whatever you prefer. So you can see here that it says strike F1 to retry the boot. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So now it's going to reboot, and what we want to do is we want to press Control R. This is going to give us access to the RAID configuration. So once it tells us, hey, you can go ahead and press Control R, let's do it. Here's where we want to press Control R. Okay, perfect. Now, here you can see the two 300 gig hard drives that I mentioned earlier that came with the server. I then got four 600 gig hard drives, but they're not showing up here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your hard drives, that your physical disks are RAID capable. So the way that we're going to do that is that if you look up here, we're under VD management for virtual disk. We want to go to physical disk management over here on the right. So to go to the next page, you want to press control N here. I'm under my physical disk management and you can see here that these two 300 gig hard drives are ready. I don't want them to be ready. I don't want to use them. So what you want to do is when you have a disk highlighted, press F2 because down here on the bottom, F2 is for operations. So when the disk is highlighted, press F2. And what you want to do is you want to convert it to a non raid. Converting disk deletes all existing data on the disk. Yes, I want to proceed. Let's go ahead and do that for the last 300 gig hard drive. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is I want to convert these four 600 gig hard drives and make them RAID capable. So you can see even though they're 600, uh, they're only showing 558. So let's go ahead and press F2. And I want to convert to RAID capable. Warning, it's going to delete everything on the disk. Okay, that's fine. Do the same thing for this one. Same thing here. Convert to RAID capable. Same thing here. Convert to RAID capable. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to the previous page. So I'm going to press control P. So now the four 600 gig disks are ready to be configured in a RAID. So what you want to do is you want to go up here to where it says no configuration present. And you can see that by default, the default RAID level is a RAID zero. That's not what I want. I want a RAID five. I want a disk to fail and I want to be able to replace that disk without losing any data. So I'm going to hit RAID zero and I'm just going to pick RAID five. Now you can see here that I have each disk here again, each physical disk. And in between these brackets, we need to have something here. So it's indicating because it's, there's nothing in between these brackets that they're not selected. So let's just go ahead and press enter. And you see how an X is put there. Let's go ahead and do that for all four disks because these are the four disks that I want to be in my RAID. You can see here that the virtual disk size is going to be 1675 gigabytes. That is going to be the size of the virtual disk. And I'm going to press OK. It's saying it's recommended that all newly created logical drives be initialized. We are going to initialize them. So hit OK. Now that we have our virtual disk here highlighted, what we're going to do is we're going to press F2 and we're going to go under initialization and we're going to hit start initialization. So it's saying, OK, you're going to initialize these four disks, And you're going to hit OK. And you can see here that the process is 0%. This is probably going to take a while. So once it hits 100%, we'll come right back. All right, so the process is finally complete. It took a really long time. I think at about four hours, it wasn't even at 50%. So I just left it overnight and checked it in the morning. But you can see here that for virtual disk zero, we're at a RAID level of five. So we're at a RAID five. And our virtual disk size is 1,675 gigs. So we took those four 600 gig hard drives and combined them into one giant virtual disk. So let me go ahead and press escape. Yes, I want to exit and I want to press control alt delete to reboot. So what I'm going to do is up here on the upper left, I'm going to go to macros and I'm going to press control alt delete and that's going to go ahead and reboot the server. All right, so at this point, we've assigned the server and IP address to the iDRAC port. It's online and connected to the network. We looked briefly around the iDRAC GUI and accessed the virtual console and configured the four 600 gig hard drives in a RAID 5. And we turned those four hard drives into one big virtual disk. So the prep work is about done and we're now ready to install ESXi, which is gonna happen in part two. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow Network Engineer Pro on Facebook. I put the link in the description. If you have any questions, 
questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. That's it for this video. Thanks everyone and have a great day.